Today I would like to talk about a lesser-known aircraft of the late 1930s to early 40s that was a predecessor for one of the most iconic British aircraft of all time, and also broke records despite how little is known about the craft. Coming into creation due to a private venture, the Vickers Armstrong's Wellesley Light Bomber was initially designed for the British Air Ministry specification G.4-31 to meet a requirement for a quote, general purpose biplane and torpedo bomber. While designing and building a biplane for this specification, Vickers also designed and built a monoplane of their own initiative to also meet the same specification. The prototype first took flight on the 19th of June, 1935, and was equipped with one Bristol Pegasus XX nine-cylinder single-row radial engine, rated with 925 horsepower. This allowed the monoplane design to outperform the Type 253 biplane design in the eyes of initial RAF examiners. The Air Ministry was actually so impressed by the early Wellesley's performance that they replaced the previous order of 150 biplanes with instead an order for 96 of the monoplane designs. Now suiting another specification for a medium bomber optimized for carrying a bomb load in two underwing panniers, which ended up simplifying the construction of the aircraft, finalizing the design for the now finished, newly titled Wellesley Light Bomber. This new, fabric-covered cantilever monoplane included a new radical design feature. This was the first implementation of the light alloy geodetic structure devised by Barnes and Wallace, which gave a great increase in overall strength while reducing the weight of the aircraft. The twin canopy design was also a distinguishing feature of the Wellesley, with the Mark I having two separate cockpits. In comparison, later designs unofficially designated the Wellesley Mark II had a single continuous glass house bridging the two cockpits or replacing the rear cockpit with a turret mounted in its place. Other novel features of the aircraft were its extremely long wingspan of 22.73 meters, or 74.5 feet, and underwing-mounted bomb panniers, both of which boasted a bomb load capacity of 1,000 pounds. These panniers were also known to have been equipped with a pair of 250-pound depth charges for anti-submarine patrols in the eastern Mediterranean. The Wellesley's first production model took flight at Brooklands in Surrey, England on the 30th of January, 1937 and was delivered to the RAF on March 18th of the same year for service trials. The first Wellesley was assigned to number 76 Squadron at Finningley in Nottinghamshire, which, after further service testing, this unit would be the first to be fully re-equipped with the new aircraft. Other United Kingdom-based squadrons, such as squadrons number 35 and 77, received the aircraft, and more than 100 also served overseas with notable squadrons in Africa and Egypt. Further production orders were fulfilled, and this led to the final definitive Wellesley Mark I to be delivered in May of 1939. A total of a 176 aircraft had been constructed before Vickers switched manufacturing resources to the more advanced and newly designed twin-engine aircraft that would eventually become known as the Wellington. In 1939, the new world long-distance record was achieved by two Type 292 Wellesley bombers of the RAF Long Range Development Flight Group. On November 5th, led by squadron leader Richard Kellett, who would also end up being awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross on an ill-fated mission while flying a Wellington bomber over Germany later that year, three Wellesleys took off from an Ismala in Egypt to fly to Darwin, Australia, a distance of 7,158.4 miles, or 11,520 kilometers. The record-breaking aircraft only differed from service aircraft in having extra fuel tanks, accommodations for a third crew member, and a 1,010 horsepower Bristol Pegasus engine instead of the usual 925 horsepower engine. Two of the three aircraft, L2638 and L2689, completed the non-stop journey in just over 48 hours. This record would remain unbroken until late 1945. By September 1939, only four examples of the Wellesley remained in RAF Bomber Command which had replaced them with UK-based squadrons with newer twin-engine Hanley Page Hampton and Vickers Wellington aircraft. 100 Wellesley bombers had however been transferred to the Middle East where, for many months, they would still see valuable usage against the Duke of Acosta's Italian forces in East Africa. Notable among the wartime efforts by Wellesley bombers was the bombing of Masawa, East Africa on the Red Sea by No. 14 Squadron from Port Sudan. And more famously, on the 2nd of April 1941, Wellesley bombers attacked the six Italian destroyers which, without air cover, had sailed from the Misawa naval base as Imperial forces closed in on the base. During the day, the small Sorrow class destroyer Cesar Battisti developed engine trouble and was abandoned. The light destroyers, Daniel Menin and Nazaro Sorrow, 
were overwhelmed and the larger Leon class destroyers, Tigre and Pantera, were so seriously damaged by bomb hits that they were scuttled by their crews. The last survivor of the Italian flotilla, the old World War I vintage torpedo boat Orsini, attempted to head back to Masawa, but, mortally wounded by the bombers, eventually settled and had to be scuttled before reaching the port. With the defeat of the Italians in East Africa, the Wellesley bombers of No. 202 Group were left only with conducting maritime reconnaissance patrols over the eastern Mediterranean. They would be gradually phased out from late 1941, and ultimately replaced with Bristol Blenheim, Bristol Beaufort, and Martin Maryland aircraft. Thanks for watching my video. Had you heard of the Wellesley bomber before this video? Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about it. And uh, once again, thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a like while you're down there. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.